Today, I'm talking to Janet Whitworth with Premier Sotheby's International Realty in Asheville, North Carolina. Janet is an agent that considers anything under 30 listings to be just not that many. Today, we talk about how she started and established her consistent inventory of listings and strong standing in her market. Thanks for listening to the Jerry Metcalf podcast, where top real estate agents tell how they do it. This podcast is to share knowledge for realtors and raise awareness for Give Back Homes, where real estate professionals work together for social good. Jet Centers Aviation, Bentley Atlanta, Legends Global, thank you for your sponsorship. Hey everybody, it's the Jerry Metcalf podcast where top agents tell how they do it. Today we have Janet Whitworth from Asheville with us live in person in the Atlanta Fine Homes office. And she is a top agent there. She keeps about 20 to 30 listings. To her, 30 listings is like what most of us one would be. Um, and she's going to talk about how she has attained that level of success in her 15 years of real estate and how she maintains it, develops her business, and um, continues on such a strong path of success. With that said, Janet, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Jerry. I really appreciate the opportunity to come down to Atlanta, the big well, city. It is exciting to have you in the big city from beautiful Asheville. Yes. And to get you in person. Oh, thank you. And tell us about a little bit about how you got into this business. Oh gosh, I had moved back home. Asheville's my hometown. It was um, 2003. I was in sales. I've been in sales my entire, my entire career. Um, and a friend of mine had started a luxury golf development called the Cliffs at Walnut Cove. Mm -hmm. And he felt like I would be ideal for a sales executive there. And five years later, I had learned the real estate business. Wow. So what were you doing before that? I sold uh, large printing contracts. I worked for a major corporation out of Dayton, Ohio, selling printing. So that's where the listings come in because you worked for a corporation. And yep, you got it's a, little a business. Bit of organizational skills there. Yes, yes. Interesting. So five years you worked for a golf course community which got in their sales department, mm -hmm. which got you familiar with listings. Now what happened that made you get the crazy idea that you were going to go from that? To being a listing agent, or to being a, oh. not just a listing agent, by the way, everybody, but being a real estate. But I, I like mm -hmm. I like to talk about your listings because you do so well with them. But to becoming an independent real estate agent. Well, the recession. Okay. Um, I think you'll remember that well. I started in two thousand three. Okay. I rode the market up, and then I was in the luxury market for actually seven years in development sales, luxury development sales. Mm -hmm. Five at that one community and two with another one and nobody was buying luxury real estate in little Asheville, North Carolina during the recession. So I had to reinvent myself in order to survive. So I actually went out and in the middle, the darkest of that recession, started my own little company and learned how to do it. I learned how to list because I knew he who has the listings, the most listings wins. So it's like inventory. Right, well, and you're, you've got inventory, and you've got inventory and endorsements when mm -hmm. you've got listings. Yep. You literally have your client's endorsement in their front yep. yard for everyone who drives by or comes mm -hmm. to their property. Yeah. Wow. So give us a little bit. You get So you get into the business in the recession. You start your own brokerage. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, that is, tell us a little bit about that story and how you broke into the market and how that went down, because I bet there's a lot behind that. Well, I had just enough money to do a small WordPress website because, you know, you had to have a website. Mm -hmm. I had just enough money to get my business cards and I had a coach. I did pay for a, a real estate coach then and he had that old model of cold calling and I had to survive. So wow. I dialed for dollars every morning for at least one hour, five days a week. I made phone wow. calls. Yeah. And where'd you get your phone numbers from? Um, it was called Red X. It was a system. Oh, we all know what that is. They've become way too popular now, but at the time it yeah. was brand new. Yep, I did it for okay. five years. Wow. Sure so did. that's how you built up your business mm -hmm. and how you built up your... So in the beginning was the... I mean, your first year in real estate, did you pick up... When, at what point did you meet that? So you're in luxury real estate. Yep. You're kind of on site. The business is coming to you, but mm -hmm. it's giving you that experience quickly yep. without having to win the business that so many of us go through. Exactly. But then, so you've got all that under your belt, and you you, you understand clients and what they go through, and and that was incredible. That was incredible training. Mm -hmm. 
and now you come in to this new market where or this new business where you've got to go generate the business mm -hmm. so at what point was there kind of a moment or a threshold when because you went from starting from nothing starting mm -hmm. all over from oh, nothing I did and less than nothing yep where did where did that where did that where did it turn where did you hit critical mass where you went from struggling and trying to get business to the business is coming in and you're an established brokerage that's a good question it took about three years wow. but it was the recession just remember right it was the recession and i was learning how to sell houses that i i never had a clue i was in a totally different market and i realized that um i had to learn a lot about the real estate business in, in order to survive so mm -hmm. it took about three years, and within five, um, my little firm with just me and another broker were the 25th largest firm out of about 250. So that was, a, by then, that was, so you, you've been doing this for 15 years, so that yeah. was in 2008. I started, right? well, actually, I started my own firm in 2010. Okay, I guess I was going to say, the recession mm -hmm. was in 2008. Yep. Yep. So you started the firm in 2010. At the darkest hour, I said. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sometimes that can be a good time to start. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. tried it even then and yeah. didn't make it. Yeah. So 2010, you started the brokerage. And then by, so what year were you guys? 2013, it was, it okay. turned. It was great. My okay. business was good. I was, I did, uh, in 2014 or 15, I did 41 transactions. Wow. Just myself, not my other, anybody mm -hmm. else in my firm. Um, I was, I was churning and burning transactions, and it was a, I was very transactional then. Mm -hmm. I've become much more relationship oriented. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things I've learned. Um, mm -hmm. But back then, it was all about survival. Wow! Mm -hmm. So every morning, calls on Red X. That's so funny. Cause yep. That's that's something I don't. Pre but it, but anyway, and you don't either now. Oh no, no, yeah. No. I didn't particularly love real estate then. It's funny because I yeah. was the same way. Yeah, no. It was a, a means of survival at that particular time. I enjoyed it. The, the working in the luxury golf, mm -hmm. that was almost fairyland. It was so good. And then mm -hmm. it all tanked, and mm -hmm. then I had to scramble and rebuild it. And those rebuilding years were hard, but damn if I didn't learn a lot. I bet it was a I heck of an education. Yeah, it was. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So what do you think was the turning point for you when you were going through these years of, of cold calls and dealing with the market and what it was, and then three years in, which probably seemed like a very long three years, mm -hmm. you boomed. Is there anything you would say, obviously the market helped us a lot, but is there anything else that you, from the day one that you got in, in, the, in 2013 hit, was there any, was there a moment what was was there anything that you could say was the turning point for you and something you did differently or something you did that paid off or a little bit of both i think it was when i became began realizing or i became more relationship oriented interesting it was not about the deal anymore even though that's what we want you know we want to help people sell their homes right or help them buy a home um when i came to realize that this is a relationship and it's a relationship worth building and nurturing and also learning empathy. Mm -hmm. I was always in the corporate world, so there wasn't a lot of emotion involved in real estate transaction. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in my Any transactions, transaction. but now in the real estate transaction, there's emotion. And mm -hmm. I had to learn how to have empathy for that. Wow, especially because in my interview with Jason O'Neill, he talked about when it, People say never mess with people's money, their family, mm -hmm. or their home. And we get paid to do all three and think that well, this is going to be transactional. I heard and that. when it's transactional, we yep. wonder why people get upset yep. as real estate agents. Of yep. course they do. I mean, yep. this is, it's because that's, it's, you can't go into people's home, family, and money and just treat it like a transaction and expect to be successful. Exactly. And that's what I did for years, for a number of wow. years. But I learned. That was one of the key so things. So do you have any, and I'm asking you this completely off the cuff, but do you have any stories that you want to share that you can go back and think of that might have happened or any anything that might have made you go, oh. And I know I'm asking you about this out of the blue, but as as you think about your past, like what do you think happened hmm. that changed that for you? I can't think of any one specific uh -huh. incident it was more of a knowing, a realization, and it was also once I was past the struggle mm -hmm. of the real estate, of needing the deals. You know, in the recession, 
we needed each contract mm-hmm. to close to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. And so I think once that period was over and I could take a deep breath and I could sit back and look objectively at my business. Isn't that funny when you needed it less, you were able to position yourself yeah. to actually win it more mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. go to another level yet again. Yep. yep. When I was no longer tied to the outcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I is usually what makes the, the best agents are not tied in the outcome yep, yep, and yep. are engaged in the process. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's because it's funny you say that I, the same thing happened to me. I didn't love this business. And then I started thinking about all the other things I could do. And then I realized it doesn't matter what you do. You have to take what you're best at and apply that to it. Mm-hmm. And then I was, wait, I have the most ability in this business over any business to apply my greatest skills to what I'm doing, I just need to stop and do that. Mm-hmm. And that includes relationships yeah. and empathy and people because we're all human, whatever we are. I mean, we laugh because we talk about how much I love to talk and how much you don't. <laughs> I but, don't. <laughs> but even, and that's part of your, that's a huge gift. We were kidding everybody before the podcast that if we could all just be like Janet and just be quiet and listen, that we'd all have 30 listings too. Yeah. Which exactly. is actually a great point. And very true. I've gone in a listing presentation and hardly ever said anything and walked out with the signed listing agreement. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. I love that. So um, what are you most proud of in your whole real estate career, of everything that you've done and that has happened, or whether um, it's an accomplishment it's, or a story it, that you Well, it's probably what I just said. It's that jumping in there in the middle of the recession, learning what I call general brokerage real estate Mm -hmm. and taking my little Whitworth properties incorporated to the size that it was. Um, That's probably in my real estate career the thing I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. Business-wise, personally I think it would be related to real estate, it would be what I just said. It would be learning to truly have empathy and care Mm -hmm. about the person off the other side of the table, rather than just looking at it as a business. I've always approached it as a profession and a business, but I had to put that empathy and caring back in. Which actually makes it so much more fun. Mm -hmm. It does. It really does. It's what made me love this business. And we've talked about how in this business, there are people whose living rooms we get to sit in and people we get to spend time with that are really great, fun people that Mm -hmm. we can enjoy and learn so much from. And where else would we have this kind of opportunity to have friendships on that level, but in this business? We don't. We don't. We We couldn't get in the homes we get into. You and I did it today. Exactly. (laughs) And I mean, had one of the best times we Mm -hmm. could have had. Yeah with some of the most interesting, fun people. Yeah. And it's and it's shifting what you just talked about is that transactional perspective to this business. Mm-hmm. And when you remove that, you become so much more valuable and the job becomes so much more fun and, you, and you're so much more successful. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yep. Um, what do you have? So, you know, we know what you're most proud of. What would you say is your biggest lesson you've learned from this business? Or some people like to take the perspective of, here's something I did that was a mistake, and here's the amazing, awesome thing that came out of it. Mm -hmm. Thinking that I could do it all by myself. I've always, um, well, I started my own little firm. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that I knew enough about business, MBA, you know, very successful in the corporate world. Mm-hmm. I could do this. And, and I worked hard and I did make it happen. But now I realized that I needed to surround myself more with people like you, with people that, well, are, you, right. that are interested in helping me, that know more than I do about the business that are more successful than I am, I would have surrounded myself with more of those mentors than I ever did then in the last, uh, since mm, about two, three years ago, I started really understanding the power of uh, surrounding myself with successful professional people like myself and what I can I'm learn I'm on the from same them. page with you, exactly, because mm-hmm. I did the same thing. I thought this is a competitive industry. Everybody coming into this business talks about how it's cutthroat. And so you just kind of think that. Yep. So you just keep your own and you do your deals and you, you just train. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you go, wait, the really successful agents are anything but. They're helpful. They're, they you want have to you be. to succeed. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Because yep. We all, that's what I love about this business. We all succeed together. We mm-hmm. do deals together. Yep. 
even if one gets the listing over the other, we still we're still working together. We're yep. still sharing insight. We're just constantly making. I mean, I, you know, I'm interviewing you, not you, me. But but I think to your point, I found the same experience. Yeah, and the successful agents realize that there's enough business for us successful agents. Exactly. I mean, we're not. I don't feel like I'm competing. There's um, several really successful agents in my market, obviously, that I work with and can call and ask for help or advice or whatever I need, and they're very willing to help me. Exactly. You're so mm-hmm. right. I love that. Um, I'm gonna, I have to throw this out for everybody. I, was, I had a listing appointment the other day, and I was competing with eight agents. Eight? Mm-hmm. And, one, and it was one of the best. I mean, there are eight s- agents that can compare to you in this market? That's what I thought. <laughs> that's exactly. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Yeah. Exactly. Love this woman. So, so they asked me, which I found, I've never had this asked in a listing appointment, or if I have, I've forgotten. But they said, who is your competition? And I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Because there's, it's not, it's not. Yes, we do compete for business, mm-hmm. but as it as it pertains to someone hiring me to sell their house, that's no, not relevant, right? Because there is no competition. When you hire me, the great thing about this business is everybody I'm going to go work with and talk to you mm-hmm. and get this house out there and talk to them and get it sold. And we do business in that way and conduct ourselves in that way. All of a sudden, business actually does get a lot easier to do because what goes out comes around. What we're putting out there. Yep. To the other agents is what they're going to be bringing right back to us and the ones yes. who don't play that way mm-hmm. it's funny how they just kind of disappear so yep anyway a lot of fun what is your been your and we've kind of the i don't want to repeat but i love to ask this question this way in this business what has been if you haven't said it already your biggest aha and I want to preface it, I say this a lot, but I still like to review for those of you who haven't listened to the show is we come into this business thinking that you're going to come in, you're going to know your, you're, you're going to know people, they're just going to give you a listing because you're their friend and they love you, and then the house is going to sell and it's going to be fun and you're going to make a lot of money. And that's just not how it goes. So knowing that mindset that so many people have about our, our business, and I don't mean that in a condescending or pretentious way, everybody, but that is, we know, kind of what we all come into this business thinking, the most of us. What has been your biggest aha? That I had to align myself with other successful agents. That I, that I, that I think we, I'm just repeating what, That's okay. what we said yeah. earlier. But yeah. that was my biggest aha, that I was stronger, better, more successful if I reached out and aligned myself with other successful agents agents. You are like the five people you spend most of your time around. Exactly. Exactly. So that was important. I think that was one of my big ahas. And then listings. Um, I think a lot of um, very successful agents get this. Mm-hmm. But once I went out and got my own firm, started my own firm and, and worked it, I realized that if I had inventory, I was going to make sales. Mm-hmm. So that was it get have inventory it was all about the business so here's so you know we are most people are of that no, some people are but most agents are of that mindset i've got to have inventory i've got to have listings if i'm going to be successful now there are a lot of agents who don't keep a lot of listings and they're successful but in general that is the platform that tends to work best for most of us yep however not everybody has a lot of listings so you're doing something that's generating listings that everybody else isn't. Obviously, you're pra- you're aligning yourself with stronger people. Obviously, you are you've been in the business a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, you're focused on it. But what activities do you think? And you may not know. Are do are, gener- are doing things to generate listings that other people may not be doing? Because there's lots of people still using Red X. And it's backfiring. Yeah, I'm and not you don't have to edit that mm-hmm. out, Isaac, because it's true. Because I think it's yeah. a disgrace to our. And everybody who d- disagrees with me, you could personal message me and tell me. But I do think it's a detriment to all of us in our yeah. industry and to our clients. Not, and I don't mean that. No, I understand. Right. I, I, I'm, I don't do it anymore. I right. don't call and, and yeah, and and then it was new, and it was. But but my whole point is that I'm kind of going on a tangent here. But to get to your point, what is it that you you think you do differently? Well, I'm very organized. Um, I know a lot of organized people, and they don't have 30 listings. I'm very and they organized. they don't think 20 is any, something to sneeze out the way you do. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm organized enough to where I can allocate time every week. I don't do it every day like I used to, but I still call people. I mm-hmm. still, they're not cold calls. They're, 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 they're 
thank you for your business in the past calls. Um, they're just checking in to see if there's anything I can help you with. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone that may need to buy or sell real estate? I'd love to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, I stay in touch with people. I keep the fact that I sell real estate top of mind. And I've done such a good job. I and mean, if you've been in this business and done the amount of transactions that we have through 15 mm -hmm. years, if you just stay in touch with those people, you get referrals. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my business now is referral based. I'll say, and you tell me if you agree with us, because I'm hearing this and what you're saying and what I've said. I was on a panel recently, and sometimes when you're being asked questions, you at that moment have these epiphanies, like there's all this stuff we could do. There's all this technology and the CRMs and the this and that and the apps and whatever. But where I find I am most successful is just get on the phone yep. and engage with people. Now, you agree, great. So, yep. but because I, th I think that's basically what you're saying. Yeah. Here's the other thing. You said I'm organized. There's so many people trying so hard to be organized. What makes you so organized? And how does that impact generating a listing? Well, I've got more time to call people. I've got more time to interact with people. I've got more time to come down here and learn from you. I know. But what are you doing this? So what, what's keeping you 30 listings and we're hanging out. I love it. I just, I, so go back and remember right. that in, in the eighties, early eighties, right. I went into sales. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in business and corporate sales, MBA structured. Mm -hmm. That's just who I am. So me being organized is right. sort of Wait, my... Well, here's where I'm going with this, is, and this is where it's showing how organized you are. You take for granted what organized is. Yeah, I do. We don't know what organized is. <laughs> because, do you understand? I've I mean, you see, you said, <laughs> hey, edit that out, Isaac. <laughs> but, but do you see, you, you actually, what are the action steps that you take? Obviously, you make a blueprint to your business and follow it. But you, can you give us some examples? Like, what do you delegate? How do you know what to delegate? What are those? What are what are those activities that you delegate and don't delegate to ensure your organization and other things that you do? Well, I have an assistant. I don't think we've talked about that. Okay, I think there we that's, go. That's where I'm going. That's right. that's without an assistant, I don't believe you can handle a lot of listings or do it well. Mm -hmm. um, she handles every bit of detail, paperwork, organ. You know, my, my assistant does it, but she knows how I like it. Right. So. She handles the files, you know, listing mm -hmm. coordination, closing coordination. Um, it's a system, and we just have it set mm -hmm. up. And every, the first of every year, I write a business plan and a marketing plan, mm -hmm. and I follow it through the year. And your business, your marketing plan would include what you're going to do to market yourself and your properties. Yeah. yeah. And your business plan would include probably your revenue goals and your income goals. Yep. Yep. And your number of transactions mm -hmm. and your volume. Yep. And then your marketing plan is the activities to do to make that happen. Yeah, and I, my marketing plan, I always try to come up with something different. So, mm -hmm. you know, this year uh, it's a focus on a community that I haven't really focused on that I should have. Mm -hmm. But I have made, that is where my focus has been in my marketing. So, and it's already paying off and it's just the first And what way. kind of marketing do you do? Do you print, digital, or a combination of the two? I don't do a lot of print marketing at all. Okay. I just, I haven't seen a lot of that work. And it's expensive. It's expensive. Video, I do quite a bit of video. I've hit a niche with historic properties. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the Historic Resources Commission for the city of Asheville. I love selling historic homes. And so I've, I've developed a little niche with that, mm -hmm. with my videographer. We tell a story about a historic property or a historic um, uh, community. Mm -hmm. And those videos have, have gotten me some listings. Interesting. Mm -hmm. it's so it's the video and the digital. So you create a video. How many videos do you have? Just maybe on the historic piece of it, three or four right now. Okay. We've done historic Biltmore Village. Not that all this means anything to you, but I've been lucky, right. fortunate through the years to have been involved in the sale of a number of significant historical mm -hmm. um, properties in Asheville. So I've decided to develop that. Not that I'm going to build a huge business on mm -hmm. it, but I love it. It's something mm -hmm. I've gotten passionate about and it's made my business more fun. I love that. So, so it sounds to me like, so on the marketing end, it's all digital. Now, when you create a video, yeah. what do you do with the videos? Well, they go on my YouTube site, you know, okay. with Sotheby's uh, and premier Sotheby's that I'm with, we have a 
a lot of outlets mm -hmm. through my brokerage firm. They use them. Um, they are in. I, I write a little his, uh, historic Asheville architecture article in the local community oh, magazine. That's great. Yeah, I do that monthly. So there's always a link in there if I've got a video on the particular property. And then it goes on the listing if I've got a listing. You can go out and see a listing I have in Biltmore Village right now, and there's a video about historic. Uh, Biltmore Village. So the, what I'm hearing is a lot of, you're doing a lot of positioning mm -hmm. yourself in mm -hmm. your market and a lot of branding. Mm -hmm. So once you do that and you combine that with phone calls, the branding and the positioning's there. Okay. So as you're keeping in touch, you're not needing to tell them you're a great agent because you're doing things to position yourself so that they see you're a great agent. Yep. And yep. the business and the referrals become automatic. People know, and it's obvious I want you listing my house if you're gonna make those kinds of videos yep. for my properties and do that kind of marketing. Mm -hmm. And this is all with because the print and the mailers are so kind of ingrained in all of us that you have to do it. Right. But a print, a one postcard, one postcard is gonna get seen by one person for one second, which let's not deny it's valuable, but it gets thrown away. Mm -hmm. A video. I mean, tell us about a video. Well, I did one. I can it's tell you. It's seen over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And I, over. Yeah. And you can recreate it. Yeah. And you can edit it. And you can clip it. And you can use it as B-roll. And you can put it in something else. And you can talk about the neighborhood again. Yeah. And then you can do an update. And you can put it in. I mean, like, there are so many things you can do with a video. And then all of that can be seen thousands of times. Mm -hmm. And one postcard seen once is like, what, 80? I don't even know. Do y'all... Isaac, Isaac's not listening. He's taking notes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, but I mean, that's like, you know, for a thousand people to see that, it's going to be what, $800? Yeah. And you can have a thousand people see a digital ad for $5. Mm -hmm. And there was the cost to do it, but you get to do the video, but then you get to do, I'm no, I'm, but I'm driving no. this home for everybody listening yeah. to this yeah. on this whole digital media concept. And I think it's great to do a combination. Everybody's got their thing, you want to hone in, but I love to hear that you are having this kind of success with listings yeah. and it's all digital. Yep. That's powerful. So. And I'm, you know, I'm, I am, so my marketing plan this year was historic homes, historic architecture, and mm -hmm. this one community. And I've actually ma managed to tie the two together a little bit. But I'm also doing things like getting appointed by city council to the Historic Resources Commission. Mm -hmm. That feeds my interest on historic architecture, but it also ties into my business plan, my marketing plan, business mm -hmm. plan. Um, I was a docent for a historic neighborhood at Christmas that had a home tour. Um, mm -hmm. So I focus on that niche or that particular marketing plan for that year or two years or three years, and I, I stay with it instead of and consistency. Lighting around. Yeah, yes. consistency, consistency. Yeah. I'm writing notes on what you're saying because I have some ideas. Yep. Um, so I'm going to wrap that up and then have a few questions. I want to ask you to to really hone in on everything we've said and some ideas you have for everybody, to, things to do to engage and put that out there so first of all you're talking about you've got to have passion yes you've got to have integrity i mean something i've you haven't used the word integrity but what i see in what you do is just you got to be passionate about it you've got to be authentically passionate about it which taps into integrity in mm -hmm. the way you do it and handle your business yeah. not being attached to the outcome but being attached to what's best for your client mm -hmm. and you've got to engage those things and do those things every day and you've got to do them consistently and you've got to do them with focus Yes. Yes. <laughs> All wrapped up. Yeah. So in one, I mean, really, like for me, that and that uh, suddenly, because when I'm interviewing you, I find that as real estate agents and all of us as human beings, we're like, there's got to be a trick. What's the trick? What's the thing? What have I got to do? Yeah. And that's not at all what it is. It's mm -hmm. who are you? What are you passionate about? Integrity, engaging the two, and doing them consistently and with focus. Mm -hmm. So. What are, I've, I've got so many questions here and I know which one I want, but I want to read it y'all so that I make sure I get it right. Um, one thing, now I know everybody, or my favorite tool, and I think yours too, is the phone. Is mm -hmm. there anything outside of that as far as tools and real estate, especially in organization, because you're so good at that, is your favorite in our business to use or do you find most beneficial? Um, well, for me, I have always used a CRM. And I haven't always, I, I learned how to use one. The luxury real estate development I worked for was a huge, 
corporation and and they wanted to maintain and capture all of their leads mm -hmm. and they they maintained a very complicated database so I've, I've learned to always keep my database uh, updated and so I use that daily almost you're the only real estate agent I'm organized that's why you have there yet back to 30 <laughs> listings everybody that's why she has them so what CRM uh, it's called wise agent yeah, I'm familiar with it. Um, so why I don't, do you like I it? I don't use, I use very little of it. I like it because it's a, it is a holding place for mm -hmm. all of my prospects, former clients, current mm -hmm. clients, sphere of influence, mm -hmm. um, all my key relationships. Mm -hmm. You reside, you are, you're in Wise Agent. Oh, good. You are a Wise Agent and you're in my Wise well, Agent And you're database. a Wise Agent. So I use that uh, and it sends me reminders I got one today for a, a client that I need to follow up with. So yeah, it That's keeps great. me organized. And does it does it does it know does it kind of um, artificially intelligent a little bit? Nope, because I have not scratched the surface on using it. Okay. So don't. Oh, you just got, it's just a place to hold the names. It's and you a know place where to, to find hold them. the names. I know that they're organized. You know they're organized. <laughs> That's good though. Yeah, very. I mean, they're in a spot. They're very. They're in one spot, which comes back to all the spread. I think this is interesting, everybody listening, is that so many agents, and I think CRMs are great. Mm -hmm. Nobody misunderstand, but I do find it fascinating that everybody, so, so many really powerful agents are using spreadsheets are really it's just put the names in a place and keep them there and put them in one place. Now, CRMs are great. I have mine. I've, I've been using Contactually and that one tells me, that gives me lots of yeah. things to do and intuitively knows who I'm talking to when and reminds me to call them. But regardless, just having that list of people. Um, if there were one book that you um, would recommend, what would that be? And you can maybe name a couple, but give us your favorite. Yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty avid reader. I've always have been. Mm -hmm. And I th the well, if you want to read a great book, Boys in the Boat is my favorite. <laughs> it's a great book. It's a true story. See, I love that. Thank you. I'm not. I'm, Boys in the Boat. We're going to put a link out there. Make sure no, Isaac, get the link out to everybody. Boys in the Boat. I don't even know what it's about. It's about the crew that won the Olympics during World War II, during Hitler. <gasps> it's it's phenomenal. Wow. Book. It's phenomenal. Boys in the Boat. Everybody needs to read so that. What, so what is, because that's clearly not a real estate book, but it is. It is. It's because it's, it's perseverance. It's teamwork, it's perseverance, winning against all odds. The German team cheated. They were in Germany. They, the, the, the year that um, the Olympics were held while Hitler mm -hmm. was in power. So it's a great book. It's, so wait, but what did you say about Germany? About something The that, Germans cheated. The German team cheated. Right. I mean, it's it's all documented. I'm not making that up. Right. No, I love it. Um, they they won against all odds. There is no way that those boys should have won. But they were a team. They pulled together. They, I mean, they they were ragtag. Boys in the boat. So and I was thinking it was like some cute fictional book. No. We haven't, but that's even better. No, no, it's great. It's inspirational. It's historical. It's real. It's real. And um, it's and one of what, the best what, books I've read in a long time. And why? What was your biggest? I mean, the, re, the why is obvious, but for you, what spoke to you about that book? Because that, that just helps us know what we're going to get out of it and know about who you are and your I success. admire the greatest generation. The greatest generation were the uh, World War II, mm -hmm. the Depression era. Um, I admire what they accomplished and what mm -hmm. they did. And so this is just another good story about that generation. These boys grew and up. And humans and life and, and wow. Yeah. But go ahead. You so the boys in the boat. So we'll go back to business now. That is business. That That mm -hmm. is though. That's it's yeah. that's especially being an entrepreneur and especially being a real estate agent. Sometimes we feel like things just, I mean, we both love this business, but there are things in this business that are just so blatantly not fair. <laughs> <laughs> they just are. And when you hear stories like that, we're against all. And sometimes even the most successful agents feel like something is going to be just against all odds because there's so much that's out of our control. But in that, I would say, I've never read it, but I would guess that in that book and in our business, when you keep doing the right thing and you keep coming from a place of integrity mm -hmm. and you know your job and you do it well, and it's not about the tricks, good to great is the best, talks about that. Yep. It's, it's not about the trick, but it's about the hedgehog, but not the fox, but the hedgehog. Yep. The consistent, you show up, you do your job, you're good at it, and it's the snowball effect. Yep. 
And that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Like the law of physics. Yep. Love it. All right. What if there's one thing or maybe more? Because I, I like I'm tempted to pull more out of you, but this is really good. What is the one thing that when I, I'm going to rephrase this for you? Because in this interview, I'm already doing a lot of talking. Everybody, <laughs> take note that this woman is a very good listener. This might be. We were. Did we say we didn't say this on the interview yet? That when you go, you've gone on listing presentations and literally said a couple of sentences oh, and walked you. out. Yeah. yeah. And walked out. Did we say that before we recorded or anyway? Yeah. I mean, like literally because so much of our job is about listening, learning in our market, learning our market, learning the right things, learning our market, learning what's important to our clients and listening, mm -hmm. which you have clearly done well. So I'm going to break this into two. Number one, is there anything else that you, any other stories, anything else that you would want to ask your, I mean, that I should be asking you about your career and how you've become so successful and who you are. And not just successful in you've got 30 listings and you're the top agent in Asheville, but successful in you're grounded, you're happy, you're a well-balanced, awesome human being. Well, thank you. Combined with all that. Well, it's taken a lot of time and hard work. Um, and I do work very hard. I've always approached this as a profession. So 8 a.m., unfortunately later in the evening than I care to to sometimes mention mm -hmm. but five days a week and then Saturday and Sunday quite often as you know mm -hmm. so it is a full-time profession for me and I do approach it as a business I always have mm -hmm. and it's my my work hours are mostly all about my real estate business and mm -hmm. helping my clients and you know trying to to grow the business I'm always in a growth mode um, back to the book, I read a book early in my sales career that's an all-time classic. Everybody knows it. Stephen Covey's um, Seven Habits of Highly Successful mm -hmm. People. Well, there are two that I've always used, and they've never left me, always stuck with me. One was Sharpen the Saw, mm -hmm. which is what I do when I feel like when I'm with you, when we went to back at you, yeah. the global networking event, uh, when we met in Miami. You know, it's that getting with those people and hearing the panels and learning from them. It's listening to your podcast. I would tell every agent, I don't care how successful you are, they will learn more by listening to your podcast than anything else they can do. Thank because you. there's no way they can get that many successful agents information and in one place. Tips. No, no. Mm -hmm. And so, everybody's so different. Yeah, yeah, but sharpen the saw and the other one is going to surprise you, and you may not remember this story, but Stephen Covey talks about putting the big rocks in. First. Put the big rocks in first, or mm -hmm. eat the ugly frog. There's yeah, another way frog. to do it. If you've got several frogs to eat, always eat the biggest, ugliest one first, or put the big and, rocks and in. And the rest of them fall into place. They do. They, they do. fit into place. Yeah. You just get the big ones in first. Yep. I do remember that. I love that. Yep. So, and that's a little bit of procrastination kind of a rule of how to avoid procrastination for all of us as yeah. well. So of all that, that was great. So of all that, I want to take from you, what is for everyone or anyone listening to this, what is the one thing that you would want to be sure they took away from you and from our interview? Hmm. Be professional. Be very professional, approach it like a business, but remember to care. Care about the other agent, your seller, your buyer. Look at it from their perspective and enter each relationship with empathy and caring. That was beautifully said. Thank you, and so important for us to remember. Yes. I started this interview, but I have found, part of what's inspired me to do this is we sometimes, so much of that is in our business and it's the biggest kept secret about our business is mm -hmm. people perceive real estate agents is so far from what I have found we really are. Yeah. And yeah. to remind us in this business to keep it that way and to do in, in the most successful agents, that's exactly how they approach it, especially mm -hmm. you, which is part of your combination of success and groundedness and happiness and why we have so much fun together. <laughs> 
It's just because I listen to you. It is. <laughs> right. And I get to talk the whole time, right? I mean, it's like, just like a listening appointment. You go in, they talk the whole time, and you walk out with a listing. Everybody, forget that whole interview. Just listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is important to listen.